Well, I'm at uh, Trebertle Farmhouse near uh, Egliskerry in North Cornwall, and in one of the rooms of this old farmhouse, it's been converted into a dark room, a photographer's dark room, and with me is the artist Joe Bradford, whose work is being blasted into space on the next NASA shuttle mission. Joe, we're looking at this image which is going up into space. It looks like something that's come from the Hubble Space Telescope, and yet you made it yourself. How did you do it? And, well, and what is it that we're looking at? Um, what you're looking at is a photogram, which is um, a form of photography that came about before the camera was invented. So way before people had figured out about cameras and uh, lenses, they used to make prints by just placing something directly onto light-sensitive paper. And what you're looking at here is an image which is a photographic light-sensitive paper that I've placed meteorite samples onto. Sorry, meteorite samples? Yes. How did you get your hands on meteorite samples? Um, well, I started my residency at the Natural History Museum when I started this project in 2004, and they very kindly let me use their meteorites, but obviously I couldn't stay there for the next six years making my work, so in the end I was introduced very kindly by Monica Grady at the Natural History Museum to their meteorite hunter who sold me some meteorites. <laughs> <laughs> so you get bits of meteorite and you yeah. put them on photographic film and you arrange them to, to look like a scene from deep space. I mean, Absolutely. This looks like lots of distant galaxies with a planet in the, in the <laughs> foreground. Here, isn't it? That's right. I'm glad you're seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> um, well, what I do is it's actually onto photographic paper rather than film. So you put the sheet of paper under the enlarger. My, this is my enlarger here. And I can then shine the lights from the enlarger onto the sheet. And anywhere where the meteorites are sitting on the page, the light doesn't change colour underneath. So where um, the page, what you're looking at is black and white, basically, a black space and white stars. And each white star is made by having the light blocked by an actual piece of meteorite dust. But the, the image of the planet in the foreground has got touches of blues and yellows in yeah. it. Uh, well, a bit like planet Earth, I've seen from, <laughs> Earth, I've seen from space, I suppose. Yeah. How, how do you do that? That's actually called cliché ver, which is another kind of photographic technique that predates actual photography. And what people used to do then was take sheets of glass, burn... Um, black soot onto them and then basically scratch um, pictures out onto the soot and make exposures through the glass and that's kind of what this is except I've done it on tracing paper so I've drawn out my picture of the planet and then exposed it in the same way as I've done the meteorites and then if I want to make colours I just have to split the um, colours of the visible spectrum using the filters in my colour enlarger until I get the colour I want. So Now tell me a bit more about meteorites, I've, I've got okay. in my hand here in this plastic bag okay. and they feel quite kind of chunky but they're about the size of a conker yeah uh, those the, ones are and uh, and you've got some much smaller pieces there you say you buy these i don't imagine that you just walk into an artist's shop and say oh can i have you know um, half a dozen size six brushes a few oils and a bag of meteorites <laughs> absolutely not now it took me quite a long time of um talking to a, a specific meteorite hunter called jason in america who um, basically found the meteorites I wanted for me and then sold them to me. So the piece that I've got in my hand, would you like to hold a piece? Oh, yes, please. This is um, billions and billions, or four point, no, six, I can't remember how old. I've just gone so, um, Well, Earth, Earth is about four and a half billion years old. Oh, yes, old, so, so these are 4.5 billion years old as well, 4.56. But this meteorite has been classified as the Parnalli meteorite, which fell in India in 1856. And um, it's called a chondrite meteorite, and it's stony. But if you smell it, it smell, well, you need yeah. to hold it for a while, but it starts to smell quite irony when you've had it in your hand a little yes, while. Yes, it looks sort of reddish in colour yeah. as well, so and you can quite see a lot of iron in, in there. And there's also, it looks sort of like it's been melted and it's got sort of burn and scorch marks on it, which is how you can tell it's not a normal rock and that it's actually come through our atmosphere. It's fallen to earth from space. It has. Now, when having travelled millions and millions of miles. Absolutely. So these pieces of meteorite actually predate the birth of all the planets and these come, we believe, from the Kuiper belt, which is all the leftover bits of um, debris in the solar system that didn't form into a planet when everything else coalesced into our planetary system that we know. So these are basically older than the planets or what's the building blocks of the planets anyway. And there's inclusions in these which are believed to be the oldest, um, some of the oldest material in the solar system. And their image, at least, is being blasted back into space. That's the thing I like about it, is that basically these little pieces of dust that make my artwork for me are now in some way going to get returned back to where they came from now, on how, board NASA. How, yeah, and how do you get a gig with NASA? Well, I didn't it's get... A bit, the... It's a bit more than the average exhibition, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, there's, NASA had agreed to let some people take some work up into space, and we thought it would be a good idea to theme it around space exploration. Um, and because President Obama has now cancelled the space shuttle missions, they've softened up a bit and agreed to let us take some, send some work up on the final mission, which goes up in February 
It's on the 26th of February and it launches at 9 p.m. on Space Shuttle Endeavour. And um, we had to basically, in order for them to agree to do it, they actually just wanted to take photos of us into space, but we thought it would be much nicer to let us take our space pictures. So in the end, what we've agreed to do is have a photo of ourselves taken holding our, sp our space pictures, and that's also going to go to space along with it. So... Now, you're a graduate of uh, University College Falmouth, yeah. uh, the, the art school there. What do your friends and neighbours <laughs> up here in, in North Cornwall make of the fact that, you know, in, in what looks like just a traditional old Cornish farmhouse, <laughs> there's this work going on, which is <laughs> literally astronomic in scale? Well, I think people are usually quite taken aback when they realise what goes on in here, but... Um, it's all done, obviously, because it's a dark room. It's not something that I can do out in the, in the public. So no one ever sees me doing it. It's something I do completely on my own in pitch darkness. And uh, I think when people do come in like you do and have a look at what I'm doing, they're usually most blown away by having contact with these meteorites. And I think no one ever quite believes that it's going to go to space. So it'll be quite nice. Well, it'll be good for me on at nine o'clock on the 26th of February when it really happens. <laughs> You'll be watching it on TV or do you get I to have, go to Florida? Oh, for the I'd blaster? love to. I'm going to see if I can go. I would love to. I've got work opening in a show today, actually, in um, America that's a part of this meteorite series. And I was hoping to be there for that. But I was thinking, well, as a starving artist, I can't keep jetting back and forth to America <laughs> every five minutes. But if I'm going to go once, it should really be to the Kennedy Space Center in February to go and watch the launch. Starving artists in space. Yes. <laughs> well, one day I'm going to persuade them to let me go as well. But this whole project is really born out of the thought that I might not actually ever get to be an astronaut. Now that I'm in my 30-somethings, I think that sort of reality's hit me that I'm never going to go to space. So. Oh, you never know. You never yeah. Know. <laughs>